four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary entertainment, entertainment, and sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, welcome back. And we kick off the uh, final hour of the Wednesday edition of the Steve Malsberg Show with our friend Charles Hurt, columnist for the Washington Times. Hello, sir. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm doing well. Glad to talk to you. Uh, your piece today at the Washington Times uh, dot com is uh, the cost of free water in Detroit. And, you know, we, we really don't talk enough about this whole situation there, do we? No, it's really amazing. And, and I lived out in Detroit for a couple of years. Uh, worked for the newspaper out there, and you know, every time something uh, Detroit was famous for all of its firsts. Like it had the first, you know, obviously we were the, the home of the automobile. Had the first mega mall. Had uh, uh, what was some one of the first fast food restaurants, one of the first drive-throughs. Uh, you know, and and now of course, uh, you know, it's always sort of been on the cutting edge. Now of course, as as the welfare is drying up and civilization is kind of slipping over the edge into Pure chaos. Detroit is once again on the on, on the front lines, and uh, you know, with the the, the bankruptcy, what uh, I guess the end of last year, they've the city has had to kind of crack down on things. And one of the things they had to crack down on is this business of not billing residents for water. And now that they're that they, so they started. This is part of the bankruptcy proceedings. And now that they've started billing residents for water. Residents are looking at the – they don't know what a, a, a water bill is. They're shocked to find out that, that they're supposed to pay for water. They cannot believe it. They, they're they refusing to pay the bill. Then the water uh, crew comes out and says, well, you know, we're going to have to cut off your water if you, don't, if you don't pay your water bill. You know, this is basic Econ 101, HOMAC 101. <laughs> and these people, they refuse. They, they're, they take into the streets. The NAACP has, has filed a lawsuit accusing Detroit of discrimination, of racism, uh, in, in, for, for, for trying to make the residents pay for the water they use. And the United it, Nations Human Rights Commission has weighed in. And, and the United <laughs> Nations steps in. How crazy is that? They step in and declare it a, a humanitarian, uh, you, know, a, 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 you know, a humanitarian crisis. And uh, it's just, and, and it's just so sad because, of course, all the people and all the policies that have led to this this really uh, really sad situation, um, they're all the people who, who in politics claim to be uh, you know friend of the, the, the poor, friend of the working man, friend of, of minorities. What what favors have they done for them except actually led them to believe for decades that you can actually get water for free and that it costs you nothing. And they have these picket signs that say things like, you know, thirsty for justice and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and water is a human right. I mean, it's, just, it's just absolutely crazy, Steve. Well, next time you're in the supermarket and you uh, want to buy a beverage uh, or a bunch of beverages like uh, seltzer or soda or Gatorade or whatever, just tell the uh, manager there that, uh, you know, uh, thirst quenching and liquid uh, nourishment is a human right. Yeah, absolutely. Just steal all the Dasani water you can find and just walk right out. And, and, and with utter indignation when, they, when someone stops you and asks, you know, if you intend to pay for that. By the and way, just, and it, I'm sorry, I was going to just say, it's not a human right at Yankee Stadium. I was there on Sunday for the Yankees and Reds. Five bucks a bottle uh, of water, and it was a hot, sunny, hot, sunny day. Yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, God bless, I don't know if this is true, Yankee Stadium, at, uh, at National Stadium, uh, uh, God bless capitalism, because they're four, I think they're 450 in in the stadium. But walking into the stadium, there are always uh, oh, yeah. some smart people out there selling them ice cold for two dollars. And, uh, and and whenever whenever the whole crew goes, we, we we get our water there before we go into the stadium. Yeah, cut well, the, cut their bill in half. You know, you go to Shoprite, uh, you wait on you wait for the sale. You could get three cases of 25 Poland Springs. For uh, for nine ninety nine, so uh, what a markup. Anyway, but that's, that's even better. But that's capitalism, like like you said. Um, all right, you know, uh, uh, this is something. I mean, this is all part of the culture. 
of, you know, give me of, I uh, got the Obama phone, and remember that woman who has since yeah. recanted, yeah. but uh, now Obama's the nominee, now I'm not going to have to pay, he'll pay my mortgage, you know, that whole cu yeah. culture. But, but, and going back to what you said about, about getting the, the, the carton of water for, for $9, you know, my goodness, uh, what a sad thing it is to, to have been led away from that whole system. The, the, the system of, of uh, free market and, and capitalism is really wonderful because it, it doesn't discriminate against anyone. Anyone can get into it, and anyone can benefit tremendously from it as long as, as, as something is expected, uh, you know, as long as you're expected to, 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 to obey the rules. Yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and it, the, the benefits that it uh, affords us, it's just extraordinary. And, and okay, we may not all become uh, uh, Bill Gates, but, but we, we're able to build a really wonderful life for ourselves. Man, if, you're, if you are on, you know, stuck on welfare for your entire life and, you're, and, and, and your parents' entire life, and, I, I mean, what a lost life. What a waste of, uh, of an opportunity to take part in, in the, the, these extraordinary treasures and, and the, the sense of self-accomplishment. That is just extraordinary. But, but this, this idea that dependency uh, does anything other than cause people to be unhappy uh, cause them to be frustrated, cause them to, to feel entitled, and it basically destroys their lives. It's, it, it's, a, it's a real tragedy, and, 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 and the people that are promoting it the most, the, you know, the, the, the welfare hucksters, uh, in, in the, particularly in the, in the Democratic Party, uh, they, they really, they're literally destroying people and their lives, destroying yeah. them. Absolutely. All right, let's change gear a little bit here, uh, actually quite a lot, and talk about the uh, the FAA uh, flight ban to uh, wow. Israel. Uh, you know, Michael Bloomberg, who I uh, have big problems with on just about everything else, he flew on El Al yesterday, and he was there in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem today and uh, talking uh, with the mayor of Jerusalem about you know, on, on CNN about how safe it is. And uh, I, I don't know, why do I have suspicions that this is a, uh, a political move on the part of this administration to punish Israel? I don't, I don't know how you can view it any other way, uh, not, not only because politics is always just, you know, just, just you know, right at hand with, with this, this crowd, but also because uh, what's the point of it? I mean, there, there is no point except uh, that, it, that it just demoralizes Israel and it, it uh, basically cuts them off, cuts Israel off from the rest of the world, and the administration has been absolutely clear in its, uh, I mean, I, I would argue, absolutely clear in its, its um, uh, continued, uh, you know, the, the equivocation between uh, Hamas, a terrorist group, and the, the Israeli government. Um, it's, it, it really is, uh, it's terrifying, and it's terrifying to, to think that, that all of the, the support that the United States has given to Israel over the years can just evaporate that quickly. I mean, why would anyone... Uh, how, why would anyone ever, ever, ever um, uh, trust anything the United States of America has to say or trust any sort of guarantees the United States makes if, if this is what we do to, you know, arguably one of, one of our two most important strategic closest allies on the planet? I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama on his uh, three-day uh, fundraiser, and he was in Seattle, uh, last night, and according to Politico, uh, he talked about how he doesn't uh, watch much uh, news uh, because uh, he already knows what they're saying. Yet yeah, that, he, he, that he knows everything. That fly, but that flies in the face, and, and John Stewart did a great job with it, even though John Stewart did a great job of documenting this before Obama said that, uh, you know, how he found out about the IRA scandal, how he found out about uh, seizing the AP records, how he found out about uh, the plane flying uh, low over New York, uh, Air Force One, to get a photo op. Uh, so, so, you know, here's a guy who says he, he usually knows everything before, you know, be, while it's, before it's talked about on the news, yet when it's scandal or bad for him, he just found out about it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. It must be sort of nice to have that uh, to be able to, to go uh, both ways. On that. Uh, <laughs> but but it, but it also it doesn't doesn't it just sort of speak to the the deep reflexive arrogance of this guy? That I mean, who says something like that? It's just it's just insane. And 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 the idea that and I, I mean I, and I gather uh, from people around him that, that that really is his view of the world. 
is that he, he doesn't have anything to gain from anyone else. He doesn't. There's no reason for him to listen to other people. He's the president. He know he knows. He's a constitutional law professor. Uh, he could he he'd, he'd be happy to sit down and explain to the Supreme Court everything that they don't know. <laughs> uh, Clarence Thomas uh, tell him what he doesn't know. But, uh, but you know, it's it's just kind of staggering. I mean, I, I don't know any intelligent person or successful person uh, who it doesn't thrive on listening to other people. But this guy just that's not him. He's he already knows it all. Yeah, very quickly, Tony Dungy uh, under fire for uh, what he said about Michael Salmon. Really, all he said was, you know, he wouldn't have drafted him. It would be a distraction. Um, and then they're saying, well, he supported Michael Vick's return to the NFL. Wasn't that a distraction? Uh, I mean, I see a difference there, but uh, what's your take on that? Well, it's just the, it's the third rail, and, and me, more in media than anything. Not, I don't even think it is in politics. It's just in the media. You're not allowed, you, if you do not walk in lockstep, with the media on this issue about about gays and and gay marriage and all that kind of stuff, if you if, if you have if you are one nanosecond out of state out of step with the with the uh, the, the media on this, yeah, you're in trouble. You will be destroyed. Yeah. Hey, Charles, always great, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Charles Hurt, ladies and gentlemen, the Washington Times. Up next, uh, New York Post columnist and author Naomi Schaefer Riley. And a dancer with the New York City Ballet, Silas Farley. Wait till you hear his story coming up next.